YouTube channel. This is Dave, and this is Five Things After Manchester United's 3 2 come from behind home victory over Aston Villa. Coming in at number one, and we're going to do this in order, so just bear with me. Number one, let's start where it all started set pieces. <sighs> this is bad. First goal. Terrible foul by Bruno, again, leading up to a set piece where we concede another goal. This needs to be looked at. Eh, enough is enough with these silly fouls, not just Bruno, anybody. We're not good on set pieces. The first goal, John McGinn lines up by Onana. Everything's thrown off. The ball goes right in the net. It, we need to get better at set pieces. Not acceptable. Onana needs to be a little culpable as well. But just in general, this is just chaotic the second goal even worse balls coming into the box and, and this is and i know eric ten Hag has talked about it and i struggle with this and i know this is the popular opinion i don't like it it's never going to work for me is this zonal marking i looked around at all of the defenders and they're just covering space like if your man goes off on a run like know who you're covering in the box grab them not physically but stay on them and stick with them make them work for it so Number one set pieces. I mean, it caused the two goals. Up until then, I mean, the game was up for grabs, but I mean, set pieces are a problem and we need to fix it. Coming in at number two, time to get a little positive here. We're going at halftime, we're two nil down. I was down in the dumps, as I imagine most United fans were. And it was, you know, pretty much par for the course from what we've seen for this team. Um, just kind of giving up, not finding a way back into the game. But I will say after the two goals, 2-0 two down, even in the first half, United were playing well, and they pushed hard that last 15 minutes. Usually second halves are not our strong suit. We capitulate, usually we leave it all out there early on, and it just goes south. This was a resilient team that was playing for the manager and playing for each other. We haven't seen enough of that this season. So to watch that performance and watch that push from everybody on that field in the second half was refreshing. It was nice to see. Like it, was, it would have been very easy for them to crawl up into a ball and say, oh, you know what, here's another loss. We're down 2-0, could be 3-0. They pushed, they pushed, they pushed, and they pushed. To a man, every player on the field was putting in a shift it was a very impressive. I hope to see more of this, but the character they showed in general to come back was a phenomenal. Let's get into like a little bit more of, of why. Coming in at number three, the midfield trio. So, I mean, we've seen all the different center back partnerships and we've seen the different midfields. A lot of people are calling, you know, the Scott McTominay experiment. So to see Erickson back, um, with Bruno and Kobe, I was worried. I was worried that, I was very worried that Bruno and Erickson were just going to get run through, just destroyed. Uh, that's a strong midfield that Aston Villa have. Wasn't the case. Um, Kobe is phenomenal. For a 19-year-old, more or less playing in the six, the composure and calmness and certainty that he brings as well as his physical attributes for, he's not a tall player. He's smaller. His physicality and his center of gravity are for his age, like this is a gem of a player. We just need for him to stay healthy and we need him to keep playing games because he's ready. My concern was more so Erickson and Bruno. Erickson was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. On and off the ball, his mobility and his pace were not exposed by Aston Villa at all. They gave when you give Erickson time on the ball to make decisions, he's going to be very good. Aston Villa didn't play that way, which allowed him to be at his best. Bruno, I struggled with Bruno in the first half, but what a performance from him in the second half. The effort was 
unbelievable. It, it's, I mean, those fouls, the foul that he gave up, it was just like, Bruno, here we go. He carried us in the second half for that goal, like winning the ball in like in a full press and just covering the ground on the offense, dictating. I was really impressed with Bruno, really impressed with Erickson, and it was refreshing to see a midfield trio for Manchester United be that effective. Like, and, and I really think this is a scenario where Kobe Main, who needs to be the mainstay here, I, I mean, you can fault Bruno all you want, but he does create, and he worked his socks off yesterday. Um, it doesn't look like Amrabat is preferred by Eric Ten Hag. So uh, the midfield trio was a fantastic yesterday. I'll be the first one to put up my hand. I thought we were going to get destroyed with those three. Excellent. Excellent work by that midfield three. Coming in at number four, Marcus is back. I can genuinely say it's a couple of days before we hit 2024. This is the first performance I've seen this season where this looked like the Marcus Ratchford we all know, particularly from last season. The good parts of Marcus Ratchford. He was direct. He was running off the ball. He was physical. I still think he can get better. Um, and yes, number four is Marcus is back, but I'd be remiss if I did not mention Garnacho on the right uh, because it's clear Marcus is most effective from the left. Doesn't want or prefer to play up front. It's where he wants to play. And when he's at his best, it's where he should play. But the conundrum is, what do you do with Garnacho? Garnacho, I think, has a, has a long way to go. He's, he's still a young, raw player, but the talent and ability are is there, and it was on display yesterday. Still needs to work on the decision making. The physicality will get better with age, but it, it's it's kind of like Manu. That there's just such a raw talent and ability there that it, it's tough to keep him on the bench, right? He, but to see him be that effective from the right hand side, whew, unbelievable. I mean, that front three has to be the front three. Rashford on the left. Hoyland up the middle and Garnacho on the right because honestly, our other what other options do we have? Uh, Anthony came on and was horrendous. Like I, I know the whole you know don't make quick decisions, but I, I've I've made up my mind with Anthony. He's not good enough for this team. He's not good enough for this league. Garnacho is going to be a player. Everybody knows that. But full circle back to Marcus, he was dominant. Like that's the guy we need to see week in week out game in game out he was great the goals will come some beautiful passes but he looked confident and he looked like he was having a good time i don't know it felt like to me that there the relationship between him and eric Ten Hag is strained or was strained he looked up for it yesterday and he looked fantastic that front three was great it was it was really it was nice to see. So hopefully we see more of this from Rashford. Garnacho stay on the right hand side, and that brings me to number five. Rasmus Hoyland is off the mark, baby, and we've been waiting a long time to say that. It is December twenty seventh. The game was Boxing Day, December twenty sixth, and this is Rasmus Hoyland's first Premier League goal. Now. Important to note, this is still a major issue. Rasmus Hoyland had one shot yesterday, one, and he scored. We need to start getting him the ball. And I know Garnacho likes to dribble and he likes to be direct, and that's a great part of his game. Uh, I think Rashford was doing a good job down the wing, but the boy needs service. We know he can score goals. Did it at Atlanta does it for Denmark, and did it in the Champions League. We need to figure out a way to get him the ball, bottom line. But watching his reaction after scoring that goal, you know exactly what it means to him. You know how much it means to him. And this is a guy who wants to be here, and as a guy that can, similar to Garnacho and Manu, 
There's an excellent player in there. Let's get that guy some service. He's going to get bigger and stronger physically. He won a fantastic foul yesterday. He's been getting bullied a little bit lately. But, oh, come on. So happy for him. There's goals there. We got to get him the service. Where do we go from here? I mean, there's no number six, but just some final thoughts. Um, you know, decent enough game coming up on the weekend, but it's been rough. It's been a rough start to the season. United need to build on this. We need to get some players back. I know there's injuries. I get that. I'm, I am aware of that. Some very bad injuries. Hopefully some of those players are coming back at the tail end of January. But right now we got to work with what we've got. And, we've, and yesterday you saw a team that is fighting and playing together. It needs to be consistent. We need to see this all the time. I don't know. Um, Consistency has been a huge issue, but the desire and the fight was there, and that's the baseline. Give me that every game. Give me that with some focus, some positioning. I'll be happy. That work effort, that work rate in the second half, and even the last 15 minutes of the first half, that needs to be the standard. And if we can do that, who knows? There's some talent on this team. Got to get some players back. Got to get a little bit more of who we've got on that pitch. Who knows what the second half will bring. Guys, please like and subscribe. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you're enjoying the content. Or if you think I'm annoying and you hate me. <laughs> That's, I'm open to that. But uh, oh, that was enjoyable for, for a United fan who's been dealing with a lot of frustration and a lot of pain. We needed that. And I loved every second of it. I've been Dave. This is the North End YouTube channel, and we'll see you in the next one. This is the North End.